in Alabama. Thank you so much for listening to us every day, Monday through Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. Central as I get to ride home with you in the afternoon. It's been another great, great day today. Just had Deja Lee with me. Um, it was one o'clock. She's a writer and she is an author. She's a speaker. And so she's an all around really neat lady. So go back and listen to that archive. And then also Melissa Ledbetter and John Allen Pope were with me. They are from Northeast Alabama Community College with their adult education program, which is out there. They have a lot of small businesses out, by the way. Cost you nothing. So you need to go ahead and get in contact with Northeast Alabama Community College. With further ado, let's go ahead and talk with one of my really good friends. Her name is Loretta Roger, and she is with Cove Crafters. Hey, girl. Good afternoon. How are you? Well, I'm doing good. I'm so glad I'm over COVID. Yeah, Finally. I feel a whole lot better. Yeah, you're making me feel a whole lot better. Thank you. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm excited that I get to see you tomorrow. I hope. No, I can hardly wait for the class. I mean, it's, this is like a, one of the highlights of my month where I get oh, to go to class. You. So let's talk about that just for a few minutes. What is Cove Crafters for the folks that might be listening for the first time? Well, Cove Crafters is actually a part of Shepherd's Cove Hospice, and our group makes 80 to 120 gifts every single month for our patients and their families. Uh, Cove Crafters started uh, actually back three and a half years, almost four years ago now, um, and a friend and neighbor who was a full-time uh, volunteer showed me a gift that was about to go out for Christmas, and I really honestly was disappointed, uh, number one. I uh, love the heart of anyone who makes stuff, but I thought, why aren't we, why don't we have a group? Why isn't this more organized kind of thing? And so I made the suggestion that maybe we could do something like that. And Shepherd's Cove loved the idea. And that's really how we got started. So our very first meeting was in June of 2018. And um, I was a little rambunctious and a little anxious for the first one. But we made uh, small notepads and um, very patriotic themed. And it had some like glow sticks and a bandana and that kind of thing and it was very fun but that was our very first project and that's been right at four years ago absolutely and it just keeps us it. like crazy and and i love being part of this and by the way i wanted to mention if you would like to volunteer with shepherd's cove this is a really good way to do it and you get to know folks who don't like to do things like that you like to do and not only do you get an opportunity to learn stuff, but I always learn from everyone who comes. Because no matter what the project is, when I give out the pieces or the kits or whatever, they always come back, finish very, very different than the way that they started off. And that just shows the love and the handcraftsmanship of each and every person. So it really doesn't matter. Um, as you know from uh, past events, we do have some children who do join us from time to time. And we have teenagers. And we have young adults and older adults and people who are experienced and not experienced. I just want everyone to have a really great experience, learn something new, and make some great new friends. Well, I think it's such a great idea. And I wanted to mention this because there are some people who are just like you, Martha Stewart. I mean, they could make anything that, you know what, Loretta could come to my house, get something out of the trash can and make something of it. So that's oh, how yes. she so, so if you are very crafty like that, you're not going to be bored. But then on the other hand, if you've never made anything in your entire life, you're going to learn a lot as well. You will. And the, uh, I try to keep it to where no matter what the project is, everyone will find something that they like to do. Mm -hmm regardless of their skill level. And it's like I said before, it's very much about the community. It's about uh, letting your talents bless others, which blesses you and it honors the Lord. Absolutely. And you know what? You are learning a new craft. You're learning something brand. I mean, every class I've been to, I've learned something new and I just think that's awesome. And I have a good time coming up with ideas. And this month, we are doing luminaries, which I shared in one of our last uh, interviews. Tonight, that's, uh, well, excuse me, tomorrow night, that's what we're going to be making. But I do want some ideas from our uh, listeners as to what they would like to see as far as upcoming projects. And if it's reasonable, we will probably be doing those. That's going to be a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. And, and again, of all ages, I've seen like mothers and daughters together. I, I've seen, you know, young mothers who bring their little girls. So I mean, it, it's, it's for everybody. It is. 
It really now, is. Can, can guys come to this class? Oh, yes. Yes, we, uh, right now, I know that we're probably going to have three, maybe four gentlemen there tomorrow night, and there will be something for them to do as well. So whether or not they want to do hands-on crafting, as far as like decoupage, or they want to help with the packaging, or just help with some of I have these jars that are going to have to be transported. They're heavy. And, you know, I really don't want our ladies to have to pick up stuff that's real heavy. So they're, they're wonderful help and they're a wonderful asset just to bring that, that sense of, hey, we're a community. It doesn't really matter if you're a, a boy or a girl or a man or a woman. We can use your, you and uh, your gifts. Well, I really do like it because, I mean, I like to make the stuff. I'm not really into the packaging part of it. So it's, it's a big help because I can just go ahead and whip the stuff up. And then Mike or some of those guys out there will yes. go ahead and package them for me and get them ready. Yeah, the packaging is a big deal. Um, I was actually teasing um, my husband the other day. I said, you know, we could package a pig's ear and, and put it in a cute packaging and everybody will want one. And sometimes it really is, if, it, if it's a really simple project, I'll spend a little extra time on how it's packaged, because I think that presentation is just as important as the gift itself. It most certainly is. I've got to, before we go, um, I want to talk uh, about a few other things, and, th and this is about volunteering. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, but before we do that, let me go ahead and mention a couple of sponsors. Um, first of all, my pillow, that's um, one of our new sponsors, Mike Lindell, and I've, we've had their pillows for years, and so I like them because you can just toss them in a washing machine, put them in the dryer, and you're done, and, and they, they'll hold up extremely well. We're going to have these pillows for a long time, but I wanted to mention I, I didn't know this about him. Did you know that he used to have a cracked, he was a crack addict? And so, no. he, yes, CEO. So there's a book, it's not a biography right here. I encourage everybody to get this book. It will give you some inspiration, you know, because you don't have to be a crack addict to have, you know, some problems in your life. This guy is, I mean, he's a go-getter. He's all about it. But I also wanted to Wonderful. mention... I've got Phil's shoes right here. <laughs> They've got the moccasins. And you know that they have them half price. So let me mention this to you. If you'll go to mypillow.com, and it's going to ask you for a promo code, just type in Donna, D-O-N-N-A, and go ahead and check out all of their products. They have towels. They've got, oh, we've got the comforter on top of the bed, and I love that. By the way, I have to knock my cat off of the comforter all the time. I know. He likes it, too. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about volunteering. And I'm going to talk to some folks because I'm, I, what I've noticed about the Albertville, Boaz, Gunnersville area, it's growing like gangbusters. And it's like almost every time we can drive down the road on 431, there's a new building coming up with a new business yes. coming in. So it's over and over again, which means a lot of folks are being transported into this area, you know, with, their, with positions, great, great jobs. And so if you're the spouse of someone and you guys are just brand new into the area, you're going to love our area, by the way. And another thing you're going to notice, you're going to meet the cream of the crop when you volunteer with Shepherd's Cove. You are. I love, I'm actually not just head of Cove Crafters, but I am a full-time, well, I don't know if you really consider it full-time volunteer, but I do things like sit with patients. If a patient or their family member needs to go to the grocery store, I'll take them to the grocery store. Sometimes I'll do the Walmart pickup order and uh, things like that. I absolutely love it. And in the the nearly uh, six years that we've been in um, Alabama, we moved from uh, the D.C. area down here back to where God lives and the Second Amendment rules. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm thankful for both. It is just, it's an opportunity, um, I feel like, to not just give back, but pay it forward. Because we don't know what the future is going to hold with the economy being what it is and this uh, pandemic affecting all of us, why not use your time to serve the Lord by serving others? Mm -hmm. And the blessing, oh, I just can't even begin to tell you, Donna, what a blessing it is. I've met so many wonderful people uh, through the volunteer program at Shepherd's Cove that I am now dear friends with, just like you. Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm, I'm glad I got to be part of this program. And I remember when you approached me, I was at the thrift store. I was. And so you walked up and you said, yeah, I've been watching you on your show. 
And so, I mean, we just turned into instant friends. It was just like, like then. And I said, well, what do you do with Shepherd's Cove? And then you were telling me about the, about the craft. And uh, I said, well, that's right up my alley. I like making stuff. And so, I mean, it really is, but, but I'd like to hear some experiences. I know you've told several times where you would actually give some of the patients some of the things that have been handcrafted. What's the reaction you typically get? Oh, they just absolutely love them. Uh, apparently we have a little bit of a cult following these days because they don't want to open them. They think they're so cute. They're like, oh, we can't open it. It's so pretty. I'm like, it's a practical gift. Please open it. Um, I have been sitting with the same patient here in the local area for the last several months and she, she's got like five or six she has a shelf and she's got them all lined up and every time I walk in I go oh I see uh you've got your uh, collection she'll look at me she goes what you got this month <laughs> and I'm going to be sitting with her this week and I'm going to be giving her her gift for February so that is just so much fun uh some of them uh I, during my personal experience with sitting I had um I've had several patients where they're just a little uneasy when you first go into their home and I pull up the chair and sit beside them and hold their hand and just talk to them and and that's what they need. They need a friend. They need someone to be there when they're lonely and sometimes they're scared, you know, they may have a little dementia or some problems with uh, their mental health because their caregiver needs to leave and have that respite time. But it's so important and it's such a joy to see somebody start with just that a little fear and a little uncomfortableness and then you're getting ready to leave and they're like, I can't, I hope you get to come back again. And I'll, I love that. And it's the same with every single one of our caregivers. And Shepherd's Cove has this structured in such a way that if you want to become a full-time caregiver, there is a program that you go through. Uh, you, it, there's a background check, you know, you have to provide your driver's license, that kind of thing to make sure that you're, you're safe and your patients are safe and they do a training program with you. So there is never any doubt about what you should or should not do when you're uh, taking care of or sending with a patient. Absolutely. They're they help you, help you every step of the way. Okay, before we go, let's go ahead and talk again just for a few minutes about tomorrow's class. Where's it going to be? It is going to be at Shepherd's Cup Hospice in the community room. So if you're looking at the main building straight on, we're on the left hand side. Um, Plenty of parking, have to, by the way, easy parking. Easy parking, yes. Uh, you can park right there in front of that room or if you just drive a little bit further towards the left, there's plenty of parking on the side of the building. Uh, we normally, you'll see my SUV that says Designs by Loretta on the side of it, so you know that you're there. I'm going to try to remember to get them to put out our little Cove Crafter sign outside the door, but you can tell there's people inside the building. Um, we usually set up um, about an hour beforehand, and but we meet at 5.30 tomorrow night. We're going to be fed by Santa Fe Cattle Company. They do it is always meals. delicious. It's such a blessing because we do have members who are just getting off work. And they're not going to have a chance to eat otherwise. So that is part of their giving program to Shepherd's Cove. And I cannot appreciate it more. The food is wonderful. And of course, it's just a time saver. And then after we eat, and sometimes while we're eating, I will play a video. Um, in this case, it's a PowerPoint show of the project so you can kind of see the steps involved while you're eating. And then um, we will, a lot of times if there's any announcements or business, I'll take care of those. We have a, a word of prayer to, to bless any prayer requests that we may have. And then we get started on those graphs. And Normally we meet. Like about, I got to mention your overhead. And, and oh, what I really you. love about this is because, I mean, you know, you can be seasoned crafter, but you've never made this particular design before. And so there, it's like a loop video and you do such an awesome job of that. I wanted to mention you. that. And so it, it will just keep looping over and over again. So if you miss something, because sometimes I'll start talking to somebody who's sitting by me and, and not paying attention to the video. And then I'm like, ah, I don't know where to start. <laughs> so you got that handled. 
We do. Um, matter of fact, it was uh, one of our members who made the suggestion, and I thought, that is, why haven't I been doing this for the last two years? And so I did the first one, and then the last couple, I have had the wonderful benefit of having help with them. Um, Mike has always done, like, the PowerPoint things, and I'm still learning them, and that is, it's a blessing to me and to our group to have that ability to play that video. It saves time. And it just, it's like you said, it offers everyone the opportunity to see the craft being made. And then if you have questions, I can, I usually just kind of meander around and make sure you have what you need and answer questions and visit. And it's wonderful. I love it. We're usually there until about, we have their aim until 8.30, but normally we're, we're all said and done by 7.30. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a little later, it's according to how quickly the project gets done or how much folks are talking, of course. So. so you have it structured really well, too, because there's also a goal. We all have a goal. Yes. We know how many that we need to make. And so how many do we need to make tomorrow? We are going to be making 100. We'll do it. Basically. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. The, uh -huh. the only, with it being a decoupage project, um, I'm going to be getting a couple of folks to volunteer to just make sure those jars are dry before they're packaged. Because if they go in those packaging with the wet tissue on them, they're going to rip apart. So we're just <laughs> going to make sure, better safe than sorry with anything, I'm sure. But yeah, I am looking forward so much to seeing everyone again and getting back on a schedule because we normally meet the second Thursday of the month, but because of the pandemic and because of um, the Heart of Hospice Award, which was last week, we did have to bump it. But starting in March, we're going to get back on schedule, I do hope. so. That sounds great. Now, how do folks join? Do they need to get in contact with you? you got to know how many folks are coming. I do. It, it's Usually by Wednesday, I should have a head count into um, uh, Mallory at the foundation just because we need to make sure we have enough food ordered. Um, so, but if you want to come tomorrow night and it's not too late, you can get a hold of me here on Facebook. Just Google me. If you want to join our uh, exclusive Facebook group, then you can do that. You can um, either send me a private message or an email or a text and uh, get a hold of me that way. Of course, you can see me on YouTube at Loretta Roger, just all one word, spelled R-O-D-G-E-R, -E or Loretta Roger, all one word, dot com. There you go. Now, Loretta is a crafter, so she really knows what she's doing. Now, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you put some stuff out there for sale. You got any things for sale right now? I do. I have some stamps and some scrapbooking supplies that um, I'm no longer using. They're just gently used. Some of them haven't been used at all. And I am selling those so they can get a hold of me and if they're interested. I can set up a time for them to come shop. And yeah, absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and call it a day. I'm about to give out right here. I know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm thank glad you you're feeling me. better. Oh, a whole lot better. A whole lot better. I'm so glad. But I'm so thankful. Better. Yeah, oh, me too. me too. I say, I don't want COVID again. I don't want it again. So I'm, I'm very, very happy right now. But thank you, Loretta, for being such a shining star. And for thank you. We definitely appreciate I look forward it. to seeing everybody tomorrow night. Absolutely. Okay, folks, let's call it a day. And I look Love forward you to guys. tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye, Loretta. Love Bye. You.